So I want to give you some update about the new ClickHouse features. But if I will simply go and list every new feature out of hundreds, I don't even remember how many new features we have in ClickHouse for the last half of year. If I will tell you about every new feature, it is going to be quite boring and you will fall asleep. So instead, I want to tell you only about my favorite features, maybe five uh, favorite features. And also I want to check how well did you follow? How well do you know what is new in ClickHouse? And did you start to use these features? So I know the list of my favorite features, but I am also interested. Can you guess what is my favorite feature from the last half of uh, the year? And if you will guess correctly, I will give you a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, please. Jason Data Dives. Jason Data, Jason Data Dives. Dives. Yeah, I will repeat so don't, don't need for the microphone. It is almost my favorite feature, almost. <laughs> and you almost get the t-shirt, but not. <laughs> it's uh, most likely it will be my favorite feature after a few months because today it is experimental. You can already experiment and I hope you already do. And this definitely deserve, deserves a t-shirt, but not now. Uh, any, yeah, what? User-defined functions, almost, but not quite. This is the feature from uh, 2021. It was already half a year ago. Now everyone, are, uh, everyone is using UDFs. Nothing surprising. Okay, please. Asynchronous inserts. It is previous autumn. <laughs> what else? Mm, this is one of my favorite features, but not the, the most. It is very difficult to get, please. Uh, just wait, wait one or two minutes and <laughs> and you will have a second chance. Uh, Postgres engine uh, was developed one year ago. Okay, <laughs> please give it to me. Uh, this feature is my favorite, but it is almost invisible in ClickHouse. If you use ClickHouse, you will not notice it. It is seamless, but let's compare what was before this feature. It is about schema inference. So today in the recent versions of ClickHouse, you can write like this, just select from table function, URL, S3, file, whatever. You can uh, insert uh, from format process data with ClickHouse local, like this, nothing surprising. And you don't even recognize what is the feature. It should work like this. But just half a year ago, it was like this. You had to write all these data types, even if your data is in native format or protobuf format or parquet format. You have to repeat the data types just to read the data. Now this structure is detected automatically and it works for structured formats like protobuf, native, auro, arrow, don't mess auro and arrow. Uh, and it works even for semi-structured and unstructured formats like JSON, uh, each row, CSV, TSV, everything will be detected automatically like this. If you have JSON, uh, most likely types will be detected as nullable strings. 
uh, no surprising sometimes as numbers, sometimes as arrays, multidimensional arrays, tuples also supported. It looks like this works for every JSON. I will just, I will not dig into these details. It works for CSV and TSV and CSV with and without header. And you can even read data in unstructured format and give your own schema on demand. So you just read the columns and cast on the fly. And you can even read everything as a string, as blob. It works for protobuf, cat and proto. And even more, if you create a distributed table and you already have existing shard, you don't have to specify the schema at all. And the same for replicated table. You create first replica, you list the schema. You create the second replica, and you just type create table without columns and it will read it and it will work. And it can auto detect formats. You don't have to write format CSV if it is CSV. Okay, this was the first and no one guessed correctly. So no one will get a t-shirt, but now second chance. Click house keep. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> uh, this is uh, like infrastructure component. And this infrastructure component, you usually don't like, you usually will fear it if you use Zookeeper. But now we have Click house Keeper and Click house Keeper is much more nice. Uh, I don't know, but how many people in this room uh, likes Java? Uh, <laughs> no one. Some people like Scala. Mm, okay, even if you like programming in Java, probably you don't like Zookeeper, especially you don't like to set up. You have to specify the size of heap memory, uh, you have to carefully configure it and you still will face some difficulties if you use it for heavy traffic. Now you can replace it with ClickHouse Keeper and you can use ClickHouse Keeper as Zookeeper, not only with ClickHouse. You can replace it in your software stack. You can use it with Kafka, everything else. And also you can run it directly inside ClickHouse. So you will use only ClickHouse, configure ClickHouse Keeper inside it, and you will have no separate infrastructure component. So it is well tested. Uh, we have JEPSON tests, stress tests, functional integration tests. It is used in production. It, it is production ready for a long time. It is faster than ZooKeeper. It is using less amount of memory. The snapshots and logs will take less amount of disk space. So everything is better. No surprises. Okay, what will be the third favorite feature? And it will be difficult to guess. Most likely, most likely you will not guess correctly, but I will give you I will give you a clue. Again, this is almost invisible feature. But you will be very happy that this feature exists. Caching? Mm, not quite. Not, not quite. It is about memory. But what about memory? In memory tables, it is from 2014. <laughs> <laughs> some new feature, some significant improvement. 
I was always dreaming about this improvement for years. And now we have it. But it looks like a very small improvement. But actually it is fundamental improvement inside ClickHouse. It is about memory. About memory. What? <laughs> Ksenia, please. Memory over commit. You are absolutely right. But you will not get a t-shirt. <laughs> because you already have it. <laughs> yeah, you can have one more. You can have you can have 10 more in our we have a large number of t-shirts in our office okay this is about flexible memory limits how it was in uh, 2021 you run a query this query will face memory limitation like 10 gigabyte like 10 gigabytes by default and it will throw exception and you will wonder why does it throw exception after just 10 gigabytes if I have half of terabyte of memory on my server and it is available. It was just a rigid, not flexible memory limit that you can modify set with a setting, but just to some number like 10 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes, whatever you want. But now you don't have to do this. Uh, if memory is available, the query can use more memory. If you have many, many queries, every query is using more memory and you will you have a shortage of memory. We just kill some of the queries. <laughs> it will throw exception as before, but it is strictly better than before and I like it. So, and again, this is also very interesting and to help you i will say that this feature can significantly speed up your queries and it can do that automatically uh, automatically speed please absolutely <laughs> absolutely do you use projections yeah so what is the difference between projections and materialized views? You can already create materialized views for your tables and have data in multiple formats like main table, non-aggregated, aggregated materialized views as aggregating merge tree. Uh, it is quite popular, but with several disadvantages. First, you have to manually modify your query to use materialized views. And second, insertion into the table and materialized views is not atomic. So you can get some inconsistency, but projections is, is something that you can define for your table and projections guaranteed to stay consistent with your table. And queries will be optimized on the fly automatically. Uh, they are automatically replicated. And how does it look? It looks like this. I have a huge table with events and I created a projection with summaries uh, just by doing group by. It works almost in the same way as materialized views but the data will reside directly in the table parts. And I can add the projections on the fly with alter table, add the projection, draw projection, everything else, everything is supported. Yes, please take a picture. <laughs> it is a... Yeah. No, it does not. <laughs> this is uh, one limitation, it's not so easy. It does not work with update and delete. Okay, fifth, uh, fifth, uh, my favorite feature, what it will be. And again, I will give you a clue. You need this feature. And you should always use it. 
if you don't use this feature, something is not quite good about all your uh, engineering practices. <laughs> what is this feature? <laughs> uh, almost, but not quite. But yes, every reasonable engineer should use documentation. Testing. Hmm. Very close, but yes, you need to use testing. But what feature you should use with ClickHouse inside ClickHouse? And maybe you already use it, but outside of ClickHouse. Now it is available directly inside ClickHouse. Any ideas? What? Hive? Why should everyone use <laughs> Hive? Uh, Click Housekeeper was the second favorite feature and one person will get a t-shirt for uh, this correct answer, please. What functions? Window functions, mm, it's for preview, from previous year, one year ago. Mm. I want to give you a t-shirt, but rules are rules. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first, my favorite, please. It was from two years ago. What processing? Data. What data processing? Uh, the processing of external data from uh, with federated queries. Mm. This answer is from uh, other direction. <laughs> okay, we have a plenty of t-shirts. Backup and restore. You should have backups. Uh, before this feature, you still should have backups with uh, some other tools. Uh, but now you can make backups directly inside ClickHouse. So what do we have? We support full and incremental backups. You can backup tables, specific partitions of tables, databases or all databases on the server. You can backup into singular archive or a bunch of files. You can restore backup completely or just a single table from backup, just a single item. You can even backup users and roles, uh, almost everything. It looks quite simple. We have two new queries, backup and restore, unsurprisingly. Uh, so you see the example, first example, just backup into a directory. Second, backup into zip archive. Third, make uh, next backup on top of previous backup. It will be incremental backup. It will just reference to previous backup and it will uh, spend less amount of disk space. Uh, another example, backup of users, grants, and even functions. Uh, I, I will tell you later. You will tell me how big is your data. I will tell you should, should you back up. But short answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, the most time consuming, uh, probably the first or uh, the second. If you do incremental backup, it is quite easy. Mm, it should calculate the hashes, compare the hashes. Uh, not much different. Actually, it is slightly more complicated. You see plenty of options. Tables, 
partitions, dictionaries, you, yes, you can back up even dictionaries, databases, you can back up temporary tables. I don't know for what reason, my, <laughs> my co but my colleague has implemented backup of the temporary tables. <laughs> Maybe you have created temporary tables and you think, oops, I want this table to be not temporary. <laughs> And you can backup to file or to file on external disk to incremental backups. Hmm. Okay, so five items. Yeah. Uh, yes, you can. I'm not sure if it is already available in ClickHouse. At least it will be available in ClickHouse Cloud, our new service. <laughs> okay, so plenty of items but so far you get only one t-shirt you are the winner i want uh you already have it. uh we will replay it. yeah we will fix it i want to give you more t-shirts uh of the right size yeah, and I want you to make a guess what is another favorite feature. Uh, all these features are almost equally favorite for me, but this is special. So it is not only about software. Hmm. It is also about hardware. What? You said uh, M1, M1, but this answer is almost correct, but not quite. Uh, and who, uh, not encryption, who said ARM? You, okay, you get our T-shirt. What is it all about? Uh, this is a CPU architecture that is named ARM64 or ARCH64, like, um, ARM64 is for amateurs and ARCH64 is the name for that real professionals will use. Uh, and this architecture is quite uh, widespread. Uh, and first implementation in ClickHouse was available in year 2016. It was six years ago. And since that time we have tested it on many, many different implementations, including M1 and including AWS Graviton, all three generations, and including some secret Google CPUs that are not even available for now. And we have implemented automated builds, packages, Docker images, full functional automated tests, automated performance tests, we optimize the performance specifically for ARM with ARM Neon uh, instruction set. We have supported just-in-time compilation for queries, vectorizations of queries, query profiler, introspection, almost everything. Maybe just a few features are not uh, supported like hyperscan, but most likely you don't use hyperscan or you do. No? Okay. Uh, what about gRPC protocol? Do you use it with ClickHouse? No? Okay. So you can just switch to ARCH64. And we have tested it on AWS for total queries throughput. And it gives almost two times improvement in terms of cost performance. So I did not list any of experimental features, but we have two of them. Support for semi-structured data. You say this? You. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you get the t-shirt. And uh, many people are already using this feature. It is quite nice. It is very similar to schema inference but it is different. 
because schema inference will just um, set up the schema for your table and data will be parsed with this schema. But for semi-structured data, we will not set up any schema. You can load data with one schema, then change it, introduce new records, and these new fields in JSON will be added as dynamic subcolumns. And another favorite feature is transactions. I cannot say it's my favorite because it is available in prototype. Okay, let's look further. For semi-structured data, it looks pretty easy. We have a data type, name it JSON. It will automatically create sub columns for your data. And we have a natural way to query these sub columns. Instead of uh, using string data type for JSON and these functions like JSON extract string, if you use JSON data type, you will just type it like you do in JavaScript, maybe in every programming language and queries will work faster. So double advantage. If you look inside, maybe it will look not quite beautiful. If you ask ClickHouse what types you actually have used, it will look like a bunch of sub columns of some complicated data types. But you will get performance and queries will work as fast as with predefined uh, structure. Why it is not, uh, why is it, is it still experimental? We still have to introduce several optimizations and mainly not only for performance, but also for usability. And for performance as a bonus, uh, you have another, yet another feature, sparse encoding for columns. If your columns are mostly unset, so zeros or empty strings and set only sometimes, you can use this setting for a table and it will automatically compress this uh, columns even before real compression. So it will apply compression twice. First, specialized compression, then generic compression. And data will be processed even without decompression, without full decompression. What about transactions? Do you need transactions in ClickHouse? Uh, that's good. <laughs> Otherwise I will feel that we will do this work for no one. Who else need, needs transactions in ClickHouse? Why you say like this? Yeah, you need this. Not like this, like this. <laughs> okay. So we are not going to make ClickHouse uh, like OLTP database. ClickHouse is not Oracle. We don't want to be like Oracle. We are better. But you still need transactions to do atomic inserts into multiple tables, uh, to do multiple selects from one snapshot. And if you use materialized views, you need atomic insertion into materialized views. So why don't have transactions inside ClickHouse? And now we already have a prototype and you can experiment with this prototype, we need your feedback. So transactions, this feature are, is not ready for production, but we need you <laughs> for testing. Yeah, especially if you will test it in production. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, currently it is available in various uh, in very strange subset of scenarios. So for non-replicated merge tree tables, but if you have a uh, click housekeeper or zookeeper, uh, it will be available for replicated merge tree. I hope this year, mm, so Q4 or maybe Q3, uh, I will ask mm, Alexander Tokmakov and we will see. And as a bonus, who said who said that everyone needs documentation? You. So you get the t-shirts. As a bonus, this is one of the most, actually one of the most important features, maybe the most important. What is the use of all previous features if you don't have proper documentation? Like for backups, they are not yet documented. But what about the new documentation? The main advantage is people. Now we have people specifically to make this new documentation better. And it already uh, beginning to, to, be, uh, to become better. We already have tutorials for integrations with, if you want to integrate ClickHouse with arc, arc type, uh, here we go, with a superset, with Grafana, with everything. We have tutorials for every use case. Okay, finally, what is next? I have a list of features that we may be not going to implement at all. There's a list of quite weird features, unusual features for ClickHouse. And I want, yes, please read. And I want you to vote, vote for the most weird feature. Yeah, the most weird. And if I will like your answer, I will not give you a t-shirt. <laughs> Instead, I will go and implement this feature. Batch jobs. Yes, one of the most interesting. If you want to do something like extract data from external data source and replace some table and do it every day uh, in the morning uh, in Pacific time like this. And after this job is ready, do some aggregation and place results into another table. Yes, this is what it is for. Okay. so. Uh, this is the first vote for, for batch jobs. And if no one will propose, okay. Uh, excellent. We already fixed this Pre uh, previous year. Now you can configure ClickHouse with YAML. Uh, you can even mix. Uh, <laughs> By the way, I uh, already get used to XML. So I will be quite surprised if I will see ClickHouse configs in YAML, but now it is possible. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, very interesting. First question, do you really need this feature? Yeah, and what about vector search? Why do you need vector search? And what is vector search? Uh, it is for search in inside machine learning embeddings. Imagine if you have cat videos inside ClickHouse, but you don't want to just insert uh, insert MKV files into ClickHouse. Instead, you just do some machine learning and you will transform every video into a vector of maybe 1000 of columns. And you want to search for similar objects, similar videos. Okay. No, we will implement this. <laughs> Okay. 
Yeah, click. Uh, yeah. It's something like a built-in tool. Yeah, and we already have it, and you can use it. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Sorry. Uh, now the question is, if I want to add one or two more nodes, mm -hmm. will that automatically accommodate, like in Druid or something? Uh, you, as of now, it doesn't mm, help. It doesn't uh, do it. Almost. Almost. You have to edit the configuration. So your proposal is to make automatic discovery for click housekeeper. Uh, for zookeeper, you also need to edit the configs to list all the nodes on a yeah, and it will be better than Zookeeper. This feature is not in the list, but you will get a t-shirt for this proposal. Okay, and hmm. by the way, I like streaming queries. Yeah, what? Yeah, key value data Mars, also very interesting. What did you find interesting about this? Yeah. Yeah, and we want to solve this scenario. Another scenario is when you have a logs, maybe click stream, and you want to create a user profiles for personalization. And you usually will create this user profiles from ClickHouse data, but you have to put it inside Redis just to serve in real time for hundreds of thousands of queries. We want to make it possible directly inside ClickHouse. It will be much more efficient. Yeah, so pretty interesting. <clears throat> uh, it is more than data skipping index. Data skipping indexes will scan through the table, skipping some subset of data. But this will directly locate positions of some data. It can be used for text search, even for full text search. Yes, I want this feature. Hmm. Also, yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, it will be similar, but not with B trees. It will still use uh, LSM trees, but uh, external LSM trees that will reference into the main table. Okay, no one needs GPU offloading. I will <laughs> just throw it off. Uh, no one needs embedded click house, but how wonderful. It, Imagine you're just writing Python script and you don't want to install ClickHouse. You want ClickHouse to be available as a modular uh, inside Python. <laughs> and no one needs streaming queries. Mm, it's not in the list. <laughs> okay, I will add it to the list, lightweight deletes. Uh, it is much more broad. First, imagine that you will be able to use ClickHouse as a small Kafka. <laughs> you will have data streams inside ClickHouse and sub you can subscribe to these data streams and push data to another tables. And by the way, about Kafka, we still need some improvements for this table engine for exactly once semantic. Uh, you said don't even try. Okay, I am ready for, for nightmare. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So how, how much time do we have for extra questions? Yeah, are there many extra questions? The other option is, of course, is to grab a beer and have informal conversations or are there any burning questions? Let, let, let's take a time, let's, uh, two or three more questions. Have a beer. If you have more questions, talk directly to Alexi or to uh, Christoph um, or to Xenia. Yeah. Question one. Uh, has ClickHouse ever considered automatic data rebalancing so that when we resharing, uh, I mean, when we add a new node uh, to rebalance the, the partitions across these nodes? Yes, we do. And the problem is we consider it in two different ways. One approach is more simple. Uh, it is about not rebalancing data at all, <laughs> but uh, in, in the same way, in the same time to solve uh, data rebalancing with a shared storage. If you use a shared storage, you can dynamically choose what data to read on every host. And if you do this, you don't need rebalancing. You can process distributed joins efficiently simply by reading uh, corresponding data on the same node. You can optimize group by, by splitting data by aggregation key. And the problem is uh, this solution is only available if you use shared storage in the cloud. If you use ClickHouse on-premise, maybe you can cheat and install Minio or Ceph, but I am not sure that, that you will get away with this <laughs> cheating. <laughs> uh, so maybe we will have to implement uh, data rebalancing for real. It is not in the list because we constantly shift this task uh, we'll constantly shift it for later and later time. So I'm not sure, I will not give any guarantees, but we will try. Question number two. Um, we are interested in trying out the projection. Do you have any estimation or benchmark results on how much is the increase in disk, disk space and the additional CPU consumption in terms of doing merges during mm -hmm. writes? Like how does it compare to manually create the same table with a different primary key? Uh, it will consume exactly the same amount of resources, maybe almost exactly, because data layout on disk will be slightly different. Data will be inside the same partitions as for main table, but most likely the data size, uh, data amount on disk will be the same. And for query performance, also almost the same with some minor differences related to uh, data distribution between uh, parts and partitions. So if you will have many, many parts, sometimes if you have a separate aggregated table, uh, it will use less the number of parts and will be slightly more efficient. But most of the time, performance will be almost identical. And the last question. Anyone? No? I suggest we have a beer, wrap things up. Thanks for coming. Much appreciated. Indeed.